morning. How you guys doing? Awesome, man. It, it was interesting. Uh, a few months back, uh, I uh, went on a little pastor's retreat. There's this place down in Charleston where you can go for free and get away for a few days on this pastor's retreat. They had this guy there, and um, you can actually, he'll actually take some time to help you um, learn how to be a better preacher. And so he, he actually pulled up one of my videos to watch it. I'm like, I don't like this, <laughs> right? This, this guy um, is a professional that works with TED Talk people. You know what TED Talks is, right? Yeah, and the first thing he said is, don't ask the crowd how they're doing. <laughs> so, sorry, how you doing? <laughs> sorry, I don't always listen to the professionals. All right. <laughs> Man, great to have you guys. My name is Pastor Chris. If this is your first time, um, be patient with us over the next couple of weeks. We're trying to get used to this new rhythm of three services. Um, we obviously took a bunch of chairs up, um, thinking that spreading people out between three services would work. And the first two ha- services, it hasn't worked. So um, you probably had a headache coming into the parking lot, and you will have a headache going out of the parking lot. So, um, But just be patient with us. Welcome to a new year, man. I'll always love a new year. Uh, It's a great opportunity for for us as individuals to put the past year hopefully to rest. Um, Although I I don't know if you know this, but there are a lot of times when things from the past follow you into the present, right? And you have to deal with them. Realize that if we run from things from the past and we haven't dealt with, they follow you each year. And um, so we're hoping that 2024 becomes a breakthrough year for you, where if there are some things from the past that you haven't dealt with, this is your breakthrough year, that 2024 can be that year for you. We actually, um, I don't, for those of you who are regulars here, um, over the past, of the, uh, over the last few weeks or a couple of months now, we've had these boards on the side, not these present ones, but we had boards on the wall that had uh, uh, an opportunity for you to come and put prayer requests in it. So we decided after, after the uh, end of the year that we were done with those prayer requests. Okay, you're like, well, that's not very nice. No, we put them in the answered prayer bucket. So we had an answered prayer bucket. So all those prayers that you may have written down and you may have been praying for over 2023, they got taken down and we threw them into the prayer bucket because we believe if God hasn't already answered those prayers, that he's going to answer them in some form or fashion. Um, So we're just really excited about, yeah, we're really excited about that. So you believe that God wants to do something awesome in um, that situation, in that person's life. Um, And sometimes you just need to stop praying and start thanking God for what he's going to do. And I just challenge that. So we are starting a series called Bold Bold Prayers. And I'm really excited about it. What, Willie? Yes, sir. I want to know how Miss Allie is doing. You want to know how Miss Allie is doing. As a, Allie is my daughter. Um, and talk about answered prayer. Um, a couple of months ago, we found out a year ago that our daughter had cancer. And a couple of months ago, they wanted to do this uh, form of radiation treatment on her. And the, doctor, and the insurance company denied the treatment. Um, and so we went back for an appeal. They denied that appeal too. And so we felt like the Lord saying, just wait on me, uh, wait on him. And uh, about a week or so, a week or so later, come to find out the doctor actually went to the insurance company or talked to the insurance company and she had her treatment on, uh, on uh, the two days, three days before Christmas. And she's doing good. So thank you. Answered prayer. Well, that's good, Willie, but you made me go a lot faster than I wanted to. That was already in my sermon notes. <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Don't leave nothing out. That's right. Well, I got a time frame here, Willie. Come on now. <laughs> Forget the time frame. All right. Okay. Well, there ain't nowhere for them to sit unless you want them to sit on your lap. <laughs> I don't want you to leave. Uh, uh, if it <laughs> no, maybe I should just go sit down. Bring the worship team back out. Throw your Bible away, okay? I, w- I won't throw the Bible away. Twenty twenty four. If you could change something, what would it be? 
Right, we always come to the beginning of the year, and and I don't know if you're like me, kind of set a couple of goals, not resolutions, because they get broken within like three days. Set some goals or some things that you want to see different. Like, like, but I wanted to ask you if there was something that you could do different in 2024. What would it be? Uh, most of you say, well, I'd like to work out more, I'd like to lose a little bit of weight, I'd like to spend some more time with the family, I'd like to eat better, I'd like to do all these things. Well, my encouragement, my challenge to you this morning is that there's one thing that I believe that would totally transform and change your perspective and change the way that you look at the, look at the world, you look at your life, you look at things going on, and that one thing is prayer. And one thing is prayer. Like, what is, what is the, what is your, what is your prayer life actually look like? What does it actually look like? And I want to challenge you that to that today, that over the course of the next five weeks, we're probably going to hopefully push you in a way that hopefully makes you maybe change the way or increase the way or reevaluate the way that you actually pray. And I, I want to really challenge you to that, because I don't know if you, you pray for five minutes. Uh, you know, there are some people that their only prayer is, oh, God, help me. Right? You get in that moment, and you're like, you realize you already screwed things up, or something's about to happen. You're like, oh, God, you need to help. It's really interesting how we get in those situations, is that we don't know what to do, and all of a sudden now we turn to God. When, we tried to do, when we've tried to do things on our own for so long, and, and just to be honest with you, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And so just really challenging what your prayer life actually looks like, and what we're going to do over the course of the next few weeks is we're going to be looking at these prayers in the Bible. This morning we'll be looking at 1 Chronicles chapter 4, the prayer of Jabez. And over the next few weeks we'll look at Hezekiah's prayer, and we'll look at Hannah's prayer. And if you want to know something, in the news, the email newsletter that we send out every single week, I tell you the scripture, we tell you the scripture that I'm actually preaching on. So you can go ahead and be reading ahead of time. But I'm really excited about this series. I believe that this could truly be a defining moment, a pivotal time for this church as it comes to prayer. Because the reality of it is every single one of you have walked in here with an idea of what prayer is, right? It's a conversation with God. Some of you, if I were to call you out right now and ask you to pray right here in front of everybody, you'd be like, huh, you'd probably pee your pants, <laughs> right? I'm just being honest. You'd be like, you'd probably be like, heck no, Pastor Chris, and you'd get up and walk out. And, and, and I want to challenge you on that. And for some of you, you're like, Pastor Chris, I don't even have a relationship with Jesus. I'm, I'm not excited about that, but what I know to be true is that you can start a relationship with him by just starting to have a conversation with him. And I just about fell off the, cert, off the stage. We actually had one salvation at first service. And, and I was talking about prayer. I was talking about prayer. You see, because you can begin a relationship with Jesus by just talking to him and having a conversation. And I want to challenge your prayer life, the Word says that we are to use the Word of God to actually challenge, to rebuke, to encourage, and I hope that all of those things this, through this series I can do for you, or the Bible can actually do for you as you think about your prayer life, because I would dare say, mm-hmm. We all can get better at praying. We all can get better at praying. And so I want to challenge that in you this morning. There's a story that I want to tell you that's connected to our defining moments, but it's also connected, very connected to um, this, what we're going to be talking about over the course of the next few weeks. Defining Moments was a a series that we did a couple of weeks ago. As many of you know, we started this two-year initiative to expand the facility. We started raising funds. We started asking God to do um, what we can't do in our midst. And some of you know that. If if you're new to the church, you probably don't know that. There's a Defining Moments table out uh, in the lobby where we're talking about expanding the facility, adding more space for our teenagers, our children, 
adding more space um, uh, to a sanctuary and, and just because we believe that God's uh, growing us. Um, and there's a story that's connected to that. And this is Zach's story. He sent me a text a couple weeks ago. Um, and I just wanted to read to you because so t- it so connects to this bold prayer um, piece. He said, hey, Chris, I, I wanted to reach out to you the other day to share something. In 2022, I stopped tithing. He said, I lost my job and a lot of other things. But in September 2023, I got a new job making more than I, ha- making more than I ever had. And during defining moments, I felt called to start tithing again. He said, as a single dad of four kids, I already live on a really tight budget. Wasn't really sure where it was going to come from at the time. Just took the leap of faith and made the commitment. He said, man, from where I was just over a year ago, losing almost everything, lost my house with nowhere to find to rent, sleeping on a mattress on the floor in a house with no furniture, working a job, making less than half of what I was used to, asking, uh, asking, having to ask my parents for money, for food, for clothes, and draining my 401k. He said, in the last two weeks, in the last two weeks, I have been promised a big promotion at work in the next few months. A small business uh, I recently started was awarded a big service contract, and a good friend of mine has committed to helping me find a house to live in. He said, where I am today is nothing short of a miracle. And I love that because he kind of came to this place at the end of his rope, right? Sometimes God uses the end of our rope to lead us into that right place. And that's what I love about that. You see, what you believe about prayer matters. God has radically changed what I believe about prayer over the course of the last year and a half. I don't know if you were with us a, a couple of Easter's ago, but Pastor Michael um, had uh, had this uh, time where um, he, we were down in Florida at a conference, and uh, something happened, and he he lost his voice. He ended up in the ER, and he lost his voice, and for some weeks he just couldn't even sing. He couldn't har- he couldn't hardly even speak. And Easter was coming, and he really wanted to be able to sing at Easter. And so we, we got together as a church and we prayed over him. And a couple weeks later, just before, I think it was the Sunday before um, Easter, Pastor Michael was up here. He was playing. And then we started singing this song. And all of a sudden, Pastor Michael started singing. And God healed him in the middle of a service. I don't know if you were here. Most of you probably weren't. Yeah, it was awesome. Pastor Michael got done with that song. He put his guitar down and he jumped off the stage. And because y'all are so slow getting out of the church, he was jumping over chairs to go talk to his wife and tell her that he could talk again. She was probably like, oh, well, shoot. <laughs> but it was neat to see what God did in that moment. And then 2023, the end of 2022, the end of 2023, we found out our daughter Allie had cancer. And I'm, I'm telling you, when God, when God allows you to be put in that position, it changes the way you look at prayer, right? Because let's be honest, I grew up in a traditional church. Some of you may have grown up in a, a, a traditional church. And to be honest with you, I think growing up in that, in, in that place, it, I put God in a box. I put God in a box, and, and, and when these things started happening in our life, and we started seeing God just do some incredible things, we have seen our daughter's relationship with the Lord just thrive and take off. Do I want her to have cancer? Absolutely not. But I will take it all day long seeing what, she, what God has done in her life and how he, she has began to use it as a platform to share her own faith. And then last year, Couple weeks in, three weeks in to 2023, got done with the service. I was walking down here, and this person comes up and tries to stab me. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't typically put myself in places where I might get stabbed. Didn't think that it would actually might happen in the church. And, and I can remember a few days after, uh, you know, Ashley and I, we went home and we're trying to process everything. And, and I look over at Ashley and we're talking about it and she's going, I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, this is exciting. I'm like, it might be exciting for you, but I'm the one that almost got stabbed. 
I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. And God just began to use that situation. And, and, and to be honest with you, it has pushed me more to my knees than I think I have ever been over the course of the last year. And so I want to challenge you. Listen, I don't wish something bad on you. But if it happens and it sends you to your knees, then I'm all for it. Here's, here's one thing. My kids aren't perfect. My kids aren't perfect. <laughs> That's a good point. And what I have prayed at times is, God, would you allow something to happen to them that makes them see more of who you are? Even if it means it's something bad. You're like, well, that's not really fair. You know what? When when has life ever been fair? And sometimes God uses that. So what do you believe about prayer? Prayer. If God could change one thing in your life this year, my prayer for you is that it would actually change your prayer life. It wouldn't be that the only time that you pray is when you're getting ready to have an accident or something bad's getting ready to happen. You're like, oh crap, God, help me. But it's actually, it becomes a more intentional part of your life. You see, I believe that the church is supposed to be known for prayer. Jesus said when he taught his disciples, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer, right? We can have a lot of good music. We can have some halfway decent preaching. We can have some lights and we can have a screen and we can have all these kind of things. And that's really good. But Jesus said he wants his his church to be known as a house of prayer. And my question would be, if we were to go out into the community and we were begin to ask people that don't go to church, they're not connected to church, they're not connected in relationship with Jesus, what is the church known for? I dare, I would dare say to you this morning, there probably wouldn't be one single person who would say, man, you know what? The church is in our community. They pray. No, they probably say, well, no, they're all about money. Their pastor is all about fame. He just wants to make himself known. Their church, they just want a bigger building. They just want all these kinds of things. And to be honest with you, yes, we're in a building process, and we're, but I, that's not what I really wanted to do from the beginning. But I also wanted God to move in such a way, and I believe because we have begun to change the way that we pray here at the church, God has begun to answer prayers. Because I want us to be known as a church that prays. You see, I believe prayer, it unlocks the resources of heaven that God's just waiting to give to us. I believe that prayer pushes back the darkness. You want to see things change in your life? You start praying and you'll start to see things changing. You see, because prayer, it changes things. It makes a difference. And so I want to give you that as a foundation as we jump into 1 Chronicles this morning. So here's, here's your one thought for the whole series. And the, the thought is this, bold prayers honor God. Bold prayers honor God. Now there's a book that, I re, that I've read before and recently just revisited, and it's called Circle Maker by Mark Patterson. And in that book, he gives us this quote. He says this, Bold prayers honor God, and God honors bold prayers. He's offended by anything less. He's offended by anything less. If your prayers aren't impossible for you, then they are insulting to God. I love just the the, kind of the brashness of that statement. Let's be honest. It's kind of like, this is a statement that kind of gets up in our grill and kind of challenges us. What do, we, what do we truly believe? Because bold prayers honor God and God honors bold prayers. And that's, that's what I want us to begin to lay as a foundation for this series over the course of the na- next few weeks, that I want you to begin to pray some bold, almost seemingly impossible prayers that God, and asking God for the impossible. The, the other thing that I want us to think about this morning as it pertains to just what we're going to do this morning is this. That we want, we're asking God to speak. We're asking God to speak to us and to move through us. 
You see, here's the one thing that I know about prayer is that prayer is not always talking. Prayer is as much about listening as it is about talking. And one of the things I've been asking the Lord over the course of this, the next few weeks, we sat down as a staff just this past week, our first staff meeting of the year, and I said this to, the, to our staff team. I said, hey guys, I want us to listen more this week, this year. I said, I want us to sit around this table and I want to hear you guys saying, hey, this is what God told me. And what I would love is to be able to hear that coming from the body of Christ as well. Hey, Pastor Chris, this is what God told me. But you see, we're, we're too fast paced. We're too distracted. We don't take the time to actually listen. I think some of you are actually afraid of what the Lord will say to you. You're afraid of what he'll actually say to you if you actually take time to listen. So let's look at First Chronicles chapter 4. Really, really interesting passage. It's a, if you go and actually uh, read through Chronicles, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 1, 1 Chronicles chapter 2, 1 Chronicles chapter 3, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, they all are descendants. It's one of those passages that if you're reading through the Bible and you get to this section, you're like, yeah, okay, come on, come on, let's get it over with. God, I'm really not getting anything out of this, right? We can, can we be honest about reading the Bible? Sometimes it's like, really? Like, what do I, and I don't know. Why did God put a list of descendants in there that I need to know about? I don't, I don't know. But it, it's just what God had a purpose for it. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to say, hey, God, can you tell me what the purpose of that was? Because I couldn't figure it out while I was there. Right? I'm just being honest with you. You're thinking it. I'm saying it. Okay? So in this list of descendants, in, in this, he, he's going through this list of the clans of Judah. And, he, and he's just listing name after name after name after name. And this guy was the father of this person. And this person was this person. And, and they were all connected. And she was the sister and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay. And then, and then verse 9 comes. And it's like, okay, God. Like, you stuck this out in the middle. Because here's what happens. See, I think God sometimes does that to actually see if we're actually reading the Bible. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to get him right here. And so, and, and so verse 9, J, Jabez was more honorable than his brother. His mother had named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the, to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. So it's just two verses. It's really interesting because what I love about the Bible is that you can actually take one word. You can take a couple of words. You can take one verse. You can take two verses. And you can actually, God can teach you through it. I don't know if you know it, but it's more important for you to actually learn from the Word than it is to get through the Word, yes. right? Because I think sometimes we get in this pattern, oh, we want to read through the Bible. You can read through the whole Bible and it not change you one bit, yes. right? But if you, if you can hold on to a couple of things here and there as you're reading through it, I believe that God, and I believe God wants to use this to change us today. So I'll give you a couple of thoughts as it pertains to this passage in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. The first thing is this. I love the fact that what it states is that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, right? <laughs> Where are you in line? How many of you have siblings, right? You all have siblings. Are you more honorable than the rest of them? Of course, I see the head shaking. Doesn't matter if you're not, you are or you're not, right? I'm the baby in the family. I'm definitely more honorable. <laughs> Babies in the family? Yeah, that's right. Those who were firstborn. Yes. Oh, you realize that the firstborn got killed. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what the Bible says. And, 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 and so what I love is that God, God says, well, Jabez, he was, he was more honorable than his brothers. I don't know why he says that, you know, and, and then, but then what I love is to keep Jabez from getting a big head. He says, well, his mother said he was born out of pain. What kid wasn't born out of pain? Anybody in here not been born out of pain? I mean, I know that there was pain in all three. I mean, I didn't experience it. My wife experienced it. I experienced the pain after birth. Still to this day experiencing pain. 
But was Jabez's mother setting him up? I mean, can you imagine your child coming out and some of the first words you say to them was, hey, buddy, um, you were born out of pain. Your name means, his Hebrew, the Hebrew word for Jabez means pain. I was like, well, I guess my life's going to suck. <laughs> and, and we find that actually written in the passage. But what I love about that, and let's be, here, here, let's be honest, what I love about that is that he could have worn the pain of that the rest of his life. Because I think sometimes what happens early on or what happens in our childhood or what happens is sometimes we wear that as our name and that's not your name. Amen. Amen. That is right, your name is son and daughter of the king. Your, your name is not the pain that you had to walk through. Your pain is not what your mom or your dad or your cousin or your brother. I, I, man, I, I can remember being a young kid. I can remember when I was really young. I wasn't the smartest kid. I definitely wasn't the smartest of all my brothers and sisters. They were much smarter than me. And I felt like, man, I always felt like just like I, di like I didn't matter right? I got made fun of in school. And I can, if I'm being brutally honest with you, I wore that for more than 40 years. And I'm just now turning, I'll be turning 52 this year. I wore that for more than 50 years. And it wasn't until the last couple of years that the Lord set me free from my identity. Because I was wearing, listen to me, I was wearing an identity that wasn't what God created me to be. And sometimes we walk in the wrong identity. And I believe that what God did was Jabez, Jabez what, he, what is the first thing that Jabez said? He said, he cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me. A person who's living in the pain of their past doesn't often say, God, would you bless me? They say, well, life really sucks. And the enemy, if he can keep you trapped, if he can keep you trapped in that old identity, then what he can do is he can allow you to stay paralyzed there and never find the freedom that God actually has for you. So Jabez, he said, he said, God, would you bless me? Uh, so there's, there's three things I want to point out in this passage. The first one is this, is that Jabez asked the Lord to bless him, to show his, him favor. And essentially what he's saying is, God, would you, would you use me? Would you, would you use me? So he's taking the pain of his past, and he's, 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 but he's walking in the victory of who he knows that God created him to be. Lord, would you bless me? Would you, would you use me? Would you show your favor on me? And let me ask you, most of the time when we ask for the Lord's blessing in our life, I think a lot of times we're asking for God to financially bless us. It's this prosperity gospel, if I'm being pretty honest. And to be honest with you, God doesn't care how much money you have. He doesn't care what kind of house you live in. He doesn't care what kind of car you drive. If you drive a nice one, that's great. He's giving you, he's giving you resources to, man, to be a manager of. They're actually not yours. You don't own them. So whether I drive, I drive a Hyundai or you drive a Lexus, God really doesn't care. All he cares about is how we manage those things. And what I love about what Jabez is doing is he's taking this pain in his life and he's saying, okay, I'm not going to live in the past of my pain, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the Lord to bless me because, and we'll see this in just a minute. I, I, I don't want to jump too far ahead. You see, Jabez lived in a time where God had promised destruction as a consequence to rebellion. He, he was living in a time where God had promised destruction as a consequence for rebellion. You realize that there are consequences for rebellion. But Jabez was saying, Lord, would you bless me? Would you show me your favor? Would you use me? And so the next thing he goes into is that he wanted something different. To, he wanted something different out of his life. So the thing that he asked for next, he says, Lord, would you extend my territory? Would you extend my ter territory? He's not asking for a bigger house. He's not asking for more land. 
He's not asking for more money. He's not asking for a better paying job. He's not asking for, for those types of things. He's saying, God, would you extend it? Would you ex- expand my borders? Would you allow my influence to go for it? It's actually a discipleship moment where what he's saying to God is, would you help me have a greater influence on the people around me? And what I want to challenge you to this morning, if I can give you something that's foundational to that, that if we're asking God to move in us and we're asking God to move through us, that we're asking God to extend our territory. You're like, Pastor Chris, we already got enough people here. We can hardly see though what they are. But that doesn't mean that there are more people that need Jesus. Right? I'm not talking necessarily about the people that come in here, but I'm talking about the people who aren't here. I'm talking about the people in Leland and, and Bowling Springs and, and Delco and all these places that are surrounding us that don't have Jesus. And as a church, we come together and we're asking God to extend our territory. Because one of the things I want to challenge you to is this, is that over the course of the next week, I want you to pray, okay? If you're, a, if you're married, I want you to pray for your spouse. Like, I want you to pull them aside at some point throughout the day, throughout the week, and I want to say, hey, I'm going to pray for you. I want you to pray for them out loud. Husbands, you're like, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. And I don't care what it sounds like, but I want you to do it. Most men don't feel comfortable praying in public. Or even with their own spouse in the room. And so I'm pushing you to do that. The second person that if you're married, I want you to pray for your children. I want you to pull one of them or two of them or all three of them. And individually, I want you to pray for them over the course of the next week. And then the third is I want you to pray for a random person. Uh Uh-oh. At work. At Walmart. When you go to play pickleball at the hop. Right. I, so, so a couple of weeks ago, during Defining Moments, the Defining Moments series, toward the end of the year, I talked about how um, I just am not that good at golf, right? I like to play. I like to play because I get to spend time with my son-in-law. I like to play because I get to spend time with my father-in-law. And then every now and again, we have some other guy, Pastor George, goes, goes with us every now and then. And, and Bill goes with us. And, you know, nobody else has invited me to play. Just kidding. And so I had this lady come up to me afterwards and she's like, "Um, since you suck at pickleball, I mean at at golf, why don't you try pickleball? She didn't say, that's the way I interpreted it, right? (laughs) And so she's like, hey, go down to the house of pickleball and, 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 you know, and try out pickleball. Went down there, loved it. I loved it. Like, I don't have to move all that much. (laughs) You know? Right? I don't have to walk out in the woods and find my ball. <laughs> and and, and what I, one of the things I was like is like, what if God extended our territory and some of you that play pickleball at the hop, you began to actually use that as a platform to share your faith? Or you shared it at your work or you shared it in your neighborhood or you shared it with your family. God extend our territory, multiply our efforts. Help us to reach new places and help us to reach new people. Push us out of our comfort zone. Push us out of our comfort zone. That's what I love about Zach's story. God brought him to this place of brokenness and almost like desperation. And out of that, he could have said, well, you know, life just stinks. And he could stay there, but he asked God to do something. He, he began to energize his relationship with Christ. And God began to work in his life, even to the point of began sharing, hey, these things that I'm walking through, he began to share them with his family and his friends and random people. God, multiply our efforts. And the last thing that we see as Jabez begins to talk to us is this whole idea that God wants to transform our heart. He wants to transform our heart. What does he say? He says, "Um, Lord, let your hand be with me, right? In the Old Testament, if the Lord's hand was on you, it actually was bad because it meant that he was 
probably punishing you or doing something as a result of consequences, right? Jabez lived in a time where God was punishing rebellion. And so his, what they saw God's hand is, is a sign of rebellion and punishment. But what Jabez was asking for, for God's favor and his blessing, and that happens when we, tr- when we allow God to transform our heart and God begins to align our heart with his. You see, prayer is not about you just asking God to change your situation. It's about you asking God to transform your heart because your situation may not change, but your heart can. And the way that you look at things. So God wants to transform our heart to be like his, which means we have to come to this place where we submit our will to him. So if you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Christ, today hopefully is the beginning of a conversation with God to start a relationship with him. If you never talk to your husband or wife, you don't have much of a relationship. But one of the ways that most relationships start is by talking and beginning to have conversations. And I believe that's where God wants to begin today. You see, because Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter six, he said, let your will be, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Because what Jesus was saying, he's, he wanted the disciples to align their hearts with his heart. Michael, you guys come on out. I realize I'm... I'm running probably past. But I want to finish up Zach's story for just a moment. Zach said this. He said, on, on 9 18, 22, I sat in my usual spot at church. <laughs> you guys got usual spots? Some of you walked in day and like, I don't know where it's at because your usual spot was gone. On 9 18, I sat in my usual spot at church. I was at the bottom and I was scared things could get even worse. I knew... I had no choice but to 100% turn to God and lay, lay it in his hands. I didn't know what that meant or what it looked like, but begging for his mercy to please save me. It was towards the end of a service. I was covered in tears while we prayed, and I was praying for you to keep praying so I could try and get it together before the lights came on. I just kept crying out to, my, to myself, please, Lord, please help me. Sitting right there for the first time in my life, I heard the Lord's voice. I heard the Lord's voice like he was sitting right beside of me on the left. He said, I am here with you, son. I am here with you, son. It was so clear I couldn't help But look up through my tears to see who had said that. Who was there? Just the empty chair beside of me. What he has done in my life since then on almost a weekly basis is nothing short of a miracle. The Lord's blessing. Soon after that, I hit a rough spot. I was scared. I had lost his blessing. I turned to reading the Bible, prayer, devotion, uh, daily devotions, but most importantly, sharing my faith and what he has done in my life for friends, family, and even strangers. He said, from there, I never looked back. A new path, a new life, walking with the Lord. I don't know how it happened, but it happened over time. I didn't notice until it happened and I looked back. It even changed me as a person. It changed my perspective. It changed my humbleness. It changed my patience. It changed my kindness. God can do that for every single one of us here today. Bold prayers honor God. And here's what I love about this passage. It says, and God granted his request. And what I am praying as you align your heart with God and you begin to ask God for things that God may be leading you to, what he does is he shows you that he's answered your prayer. 
So you'll see that we put some new cards up. We decided that in this series, instead of asking you to leave prayer requests, we're actually going to give you something to pray about over the course of the next five weeks. And so we're asking God to extend our territory. And so what we've done is we got a prayer. We put up a prayer wall um, over here. And what we've done is we've taken some little prayer cards and we've hung them up here. And over the course of this next song, as we're singing together, we're going to ask you guys to, if you want to, to come forward and, and grab, a, grab a little prayer card. And, and use this over the course of the next week to begin to pray for. We've got, we've got some stuff like Windsor Park. Uh, Northwest, uh, early college, high school, classical charter school. We got Oak Island and we got Supply and we got Lamville, Lamville Oaks and we got Town Creek Elementary and we've got, uh, let's see, West Brunswick High School and we've got all these different places and all these different things that what if God was to extend our territory, expand our territory and see influences into each of these different places? New places, new people. This is not about building a bigger church. This is about seeing people come to Jesus. Because at the core of it, right, that's what this church is about. We're preaching the word, we're making disciples, and we're caring for people. So what I hope is that actually God begins to open up the doors of opportunity as you begin to pray for each of these areas. So I don't know. I'm trusting that God will lead you. If you're going to come forward and grab one, I'm trusting that that whatever you pick, that God's going to lead you to pray for, that God's going to answer your request. Now, you'll have an opportunity to pray for people in the coming weeks. Just to give you a little bit of a heads up, next week we're praying for healing and deliverance. We believe God wants to break some addictions. We, we want to see some breakthroughs. We have a seven days of prayer coming starting on the 14th. 14th through the 20th, seven days of prayer. And here's what I'm going to say that. It's easy to show up here, but I believe every single one of you need to at least show up to one night of prayer. You don't have to pray. I mean, you do have to pray. You don't have to pray out loud. But come in and spend an hour praying with us. Okay? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this time. God, I pray that we'd be a church that's known as a church. This would be a house of prayer. And God, I pray if there's anyone here who doesn't know you, I pray that right now they begin that conversation of talking to you. No special words. Just talk to him. Have a conversation with him. God, there's going to be things over the course of this next five weeks that you're going to bring to our mind. God, would you just help us to pray for those things? Help us to pray them in line with your heart. And God, I, I pray that at the end of this five weeks, we will see God granted our prayer request. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand, and if you want to come grab a card while we're singing this last song, We'd love to get you to do that. Let's sing together.